Yo, welcome back, episode two. Uh, still ain't got no name yet, sadly. But uh, if you got a, a good idea for a name, let me know in the comments below or message me, DM me, because I've been thinking of a new name. So uh, I'm thinking about like the reservist <laughs> or the weekend warrior. But um, yeah, anyway, this video is going to be about how annual training went down. Um, which is very cool. I mean, I know I just left AIT, so now I'm already back and I had to go do annual training, which I didn't mind because I was excited for it anyway. But um, we focused on driver's training and the range. So driver's training, trying to get us all licensed on the multiple vehicles because we're 88 mics. So like LMTVs, LHSs, the 915s, stuff like that. Um, we couldn't get it all done, but we got a couple of four day weekends and things like that coming up soon anyway. So, and then we went to the range. My unit tried to get me to qualify with three weapons, the M4, 249, and the 240. I didn't get no close to me shooting the 240, but I'm gonna show you a picture of what it looks like. It's a big motherfucker, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but um, it was definitely cool shooting that. That qualifying was uh, pretty hard too. Talk about it real quick, cause I don't have a clip, but. So you have to sh mate shoot seven out of 11. I shot five, but the targets are starting at, I think, 200, I think 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700. 800 meter, I hit 700 meter, of course 200, and I think in between like four or five, but 100 meter targets, but they come up kind of slow, but it is kind of hard to shoot or see that far through iron sight. So, but you know, hopefully I can get it this upcoming September, but it was definitely cool shooting that for my first time. Um, and then the 249, that was pretty cool too, but we was at the wrong qualifying range, so it kind of fucked us up, but it's okay though. But um, yeah, hopefully this video can kind of help anybody that's kind of going into the reserves or about to join the reserves or even going to basic because they're gonna show you how to shoot because it's a new call coming up and it's kind of lengthy now, it's way different from the new ones, more tactical they wanna say, um, and it's gonna kind of help you to shoot in different uh, stances so that's what I really like about it of course but uh, yeah you'll see clips of that as well so the video basically is going to be me showing you some clips me talking over them explaining what's going on um, sorry I couldn't get what should I say better footage because I was new and I wasn't trying to just be there with my camera the whole time trying to record everything so I was talking to my leadership about uh, in the future me bringing out my camera or recording stuff kind of closer at better angles not everything but majority of the stuff because I don't know what I'm trying to do so yeah so please check it out uh, let me know what you think and uh, yeah we're gonna get right into it so I'm gonna start explaining some stuff on what's going on all right as you can see here is the wonderful camp Pendleton. all right this is located like right down the street from virginia beach over there you can see our motor pool where we parked all our vehicles i had to do an hour convoy here from port eustis so what i want to show you next is the vehicle that i drove in kind of show you the lhs and like what's on the inside and how it looks and things like that well yeah that's pretty much camp Pendleton. this is the barracks we staying in uh pretty nice facility it's decent i mean <laughs> It's like a 40 man bay, so it is what it is. So, here's the actual vehicle that I drove to Camp Pendleton. Uh, this is called the LHS. So, as you can see, got the wheels under the cab. Pretty big vehicle, I would say, kind of similar to like one of your civilian tankers. Uh, the military uses one of these, ve these vehicles to just transport ammunition, uh, water supply, any type of supply. Really, this is really just hauls around uh anything that the military needs so here is it again in the like camouflage colorway i'm about to open the door for you so you can see it but just showing you how big the tires is on this vehicle so if we take a look inside uh here's one of the newer models looks pretty clean as you can see uh typical neutral drive really automatic vehicle um so as you can see so going over here to the other one showing you a little cockpit where you can also place a gunner the next vehicle that we're working on is the actual 915 that uses to attach a trailer. So you can see some close up of us actually alley docking. Right, as you can see here, this is how tight they're making the lanes. We're practicing some straight line backing. But uh, if y'all ain't never driving some shit with a trailer on it, then you probably don't know how hard this shit really is, though. Right, make it go left, left, make it go right. 
but that's complicated with being that damn behind the wheel sometimes. They about to kick her ass out to join that thing. So. so as you can see here, nothing special, but definitely important for um, you know our MOS. So we're just learning how to tie down vehicles properly using binders and shackles, uh, making sure that it's nice and secured on the trailer. So because we don't need nothing flying off on the highway, you feel me? So luckily I have to drive my next car I'm going to actual AP Hill. So as you see, I'm sitting on the back of the bus chilling, trying to get some sleep. Uh, Cause you know how the whole life is. It's my boy Davis, he knocked the hell out with the scully on. I had to get a clip of that, I'll show you. I'm trying to get any that you can, when you can, in the army for sure. Uh, yeah, I'll show you what AP Hill actually looks like. Over um, here is like a two hour bus ride. AP Hill is a little bit more spacious than Camp Pennington has. Uh, this is where they actually start on the ranch. Like I said, the bed's not too bad, but it means what it is when you stand on like a 40 man bed anyway. So you know, it gets hot sometimes, but it is what it is when you're about me. Okay, much after we unloaded all the work, paying any more reads and all the stuff that work that was over. So we typically had an early oven bonus, of course, because we had to go to the range and we already had two battalions here at Camp Common at Fort AP Hill. So we had to start early days at the range. Here you can see where we get our weapons from the armory. Uh, of course, we'll eat your breakfast fast and so we'll be last in line. But, you know, like I said, it is what it is. But I've had to wait a long anyway because I had the two for now with my issued weapons. So all those got issued last. So I'm never going to show you what the range looks like. So you can unload in the area off of LMTV, get the range set up for operations. As you can see, the LT right there. I need to try to make everything squared away. Uh, uh, I can see Davis is still a little bit mad about me recording him on the bus, but it is what it is. So I'm up next to shoot. Uh, it's been a while since I actually got to shoot on the ball, but a lot of this is still new to certain people here at the unit. They've been doing the old ball. So, you know, hopefully I can still hit a good number first try, qualify without warming up. So, somebody just went full auto. But, uh, yeah, so hopefully I can qualify. I don't even use my weapon, they left my rifle at the unit because I'm using the 250 tomorrow, and I'm, that's my issued weapon. But I'm gonna try to qualify with both weapons this weekend, though. That's the goal. So, if I can get some footage of it, I hope so. But, yeah, let's see. I'll let you know after the shakedown what I get. All right, real quick, before I actually show you my qualifying video, real quick, I just wanted to show you what the actual range looked like and what the barricade is, what the sandbag set up. Of course, you can position those how you want, so make sure you do that as well, new shooters. So here, it usually starts out first shot. Um, it's gonna be Fast Freddy. You shoot that one, then you drop down, and then you're gonna do nine unsupported. And after that nine unsupported, you're gonna move over and you're gonna do 10 supported. So that means on the sandbags, you can have one or two under you. You let them 10 rounds off. Uh, really don't change your sight picture too much. That's my best advice because you're gonna stay in a nice, stable position. After that, you're gonna transition and you're gonna do 10 kneeling. So after that 10 kneeling, as you can see the target there, knock that down real quick. But um, you're gonna do that 10 kneeling. So you could either have a C grip or an L grip. I, me personally, like the C grip that gets the weapon more secure to the barrier. And last but not least, they're gonna do standing. So standing, I kind of do the same grip as well. But, all right, man, here's the weapon I really wanted to show you off, the M249, this is on right here, man. It's air-cooled gas operated. It can shoot out about 100 rounds per minute. Uh, shoots 5.56 millimeter rounds. But man, this thing is a beast, man. I'm not gonna lie, I could have a fun time getting used to this weapon and shooting it. As you can see, they gave us a lot of downtime working with it, trying to visualize it before we actually shoot on the range. So that was kind of cool to get familiarized with the weapon. This is the actual light machine gun range where we post qualify at, but the next level I'm gonna show you I'm gonna actually show you uh, how we were zeroing. So basically spitting out five rounds at the target. All right, so the first shot that we shot real quick, I'm gonna show y'all was just the group in the zero. So like for shooters or new people that's coming in to the military that never shot before, this is what they're gonna have you do through basic. Uh, is grouping your weapon. So grouping is just, we'll read the book definition for you because I had to learn it myself. The shot grouping is simply like, it's a collective pattern of projectile impacts on a target from multiple consecutive, consecutive shots taken in one shooting session. So that one iteration. So you probably let off 
five rounds, I think. Yeah, it's five rounds. It'd be like that at basic two for the new new shooters. Five rounds, and then one iteration. So the tightness of the grouping is a measure of the precision of the weapon. So like they'll constantly come by to look at your target, and then they'll look at your weapon. They might bring you up three or down three or left three left three right whatever to get it to center to get you a better group in it whatever but some stuff uh gonna come back to like your basics like breathing uh your sight picture where you're gonna want to keep moving and then you're using your sight picture that'll mess up your shadow lot consistently but um yeah that's basically what we did at first we're grouping in zero and here's my pictures here of me grouping um I had a pretty nice group with a 2498 2 it's actually kind of easier to control honestly heavier the weapon and the shoulder placement so that's just how i feel i actually like it so Alright man, that's wrapping it up for all the clips uh, from annual training. Um, definitely appreciate anybody that's watching it. Hopefully uh, it provided some information to anybody that's looking to join the army and get used to seeing like what the new uh, tactical call looks like. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me, comment below, uh, DM me on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Um, like the whole point of my YouTube channel, trying to help and then show people different things, experiencing or whatever, and coming out of my comfort zone. So hopefully that inspires a couple of people to do the same as well. But um, I was sitting here thinking like, dang, like what I'm going to do for my next YouTube video. And I was sitting here going through like pictures in my phone or whatever. And it was two pictures, like, I'm going to show you, you're going to pop up or whatever. But it was, like, this picture of, like, arguing in open gym. And then um, a video with me back in China, like, waiting for a taxi. And it was uh, some kids outside working out. And it was, like, maybe 6. And it was, like, 6 in the morning. And it was freezing cold because I was there when it was winter time. And I'm, like, dang, like, they're out here grinding. Like, not even... Trying to touch the bass actual rim yet, like they're working on ball and all types of shit. I'm like, damn, a little key kind of missed the grind of it all a little bit. But uh, so that kind of gives me a little bit of an idea of maybe what I might do for my next YouTube video. I know uh, hooping outside is kind of the new wave, so maybe might go to some different parks around the area, maybe pointed rocks, or might just do an open gym again and see if I still got it. But uh. Just stay tuned and find out though for sure but uh thank you again for watching appreciate any support you know any support is a blessing to me so yeah adios